Hello everyone, this is Earl, uh, and this is again my Tenacious Strat channel uh, based on the league I am running and trying to provide some extra content uh, regarding Stratomatic and uh, playing cards and dice baseball. Um, I just thought <clears throat> today, I, I had some ideas for the next video, but it's funny, I started out to do one thing and I ended up crossing over into another one and then I found out that I formatted my video wrong. So <laughs> I decided to re-record it here and I decided just to do one uh, especially on the topic, something that I really like, which is um, keeping score of games and um, specifically uh, how I keep score and tabulate my statistics in games and what I've done to do that is I've developed my own uh, score sheet system and so I figured I would take some time here uh, and talk about it and especially since I had a good game last night that I thought I would uh, describe to you all um, a little bit I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because I think it would be more exciting if I were to actually go through the um, the game with uh, the actual dice rolling and stuff, but I think that this game will give me and I a chance to talk through some of the things that are the the reasons that I like this sheet and that I would recommend it to others and definitely if I have some uh, requests for my uh, spreadsheets I could uh, offer them up. Um, just mention it in the comments and I can figure out a way to get that to you. So anyway, without further ado, let's uh, move into this. And so, uh, as I, you, you can see, this was the, the la this is the most recent game I've done. And so I have a number of things. This is my first sheet. What I use is a two sheet system. I have one that is specifically for um, scoring the game as I'm playing it. And then I have one for tabulating the statistics, which for me it works out uh, extremely well. And um, it kind of gives me the best of both worlds, which for me is I want statistics, but I also want to be able to score the game and have everything in front of me on one sheet of paper. So the way I am doing this, I, I haven't shown you a schedule yet for my league. I may do that at the end of this if I have time. Uh, I've divided this into, there's 18 series in this league, because it's 54 games, three games in each series, so there are 18 series. At the top I put the series number, I have room for that. Game number, what this is, uh, I ha so each series has five matchups. This is the third matchup, Chicago Cubs versus Texas. And this is the third game of the series. So I'm actually in game six out of 54 for all of the teams. We're not doing any... At this point, I'm not scheduling any... Uh, I do have a couple off days, but everybody's off on the same day. Um, maybe in a future league, I'll figure out how to uh, stagger some off days so that you end up not with top... Uh, you know, starting... Uh, rotation you near know, the top of the starting rotation facing each other each time so the third matchup and the third game of the series uh, the simulated date or the uh, we'll say the virtual date of this game was June 17th 2016 um, I don't know maybe I should put uh, 2015 I, I had never really thought about this but these are the 15 cards so this would actually make sense that it would be 2015 so I may I may make some adjustments to this. That's kind of a, that's something that I hadn't really thought through much, but I guess I was just going with it being the year 2016, and I would do that. But anyway, so, and then the series record to date. I want to do this so that way when I, because I have compiled all sorts, uh, what I can do is I can close this up and go back. I have all of them from the beginning of this league. Uh, you can see here, as I flip this over, that when I started out, I was actually doing... Um, I was actually doing this by <laughs> scrap paper, or, uh, you know, notebook paper here. And it was largely a very similar style, um, just without all of the nice lines, and I sort of had to 
gob it together on my own as I went, which, you know, there's a lot of freedom in that. It gives you a chance to um, learn how you want to best format each game or, you know, your, your score sheet as you go and whatnot. But uh, in the end, I guess I, I had some settling upon what I've now settled upon. And so this just gives me an opportunity to sort of curate them as I go. And so I know this is uh, one and one. The, the record is one and one for the series. I have the box score up top, uh, up to 11 innings. Um, I have had a 15 inning game so far. I guess I'm going to have to quote unquote cross that bridge when I come to it. But uh, yeah, anyway. So uh, the Cubs, I put uh, the visitors. I have a place for the visitors and then the record. Um, they're four and one. And this is one and one. Uh, so by default, you should realize that uh, the Cubs started pretty well. And if you haven't looked at my blog, which I might as well put in a shameless plug for that. Uh, if you want to see some up-to-date statistical stuff um, and standings, it's almost up-to-date, actually. You can go to tenaciousstrat.wordpress.com. Again, there are uh, one word, tenaciousstrat.wordpress.com, uh, and that's the uh, URL for the blog that I started uh, where I will publish that's basically going to be in um, sort of newspaper recap format uh, or what I consider to be newspaper recap format just remembering back to my younger years when I would uh, go to my grandparents so I could read uh, the newspaper <laughs> and be able to see uh, all of the results uh, so I would I would look through that and so anyway back to this page here so uh, Turns out the series record is one and one, and the reason for that is uh, the Cubs were four and zero oh, and going into the most recent game, well, into the game before this, uh, and then they lost to Texas in that one, so they dropped to four and one. So they've done pretty well so far. Um, okay, let's keep moving. Uh, I have now. Here's the thing: in my most recent, I, I, this is uh, an older format of this sheet. I have a newer one. I think I've actually cut this down to 11 and I've given myself more spaces off here to the left for a couple of other attributes. But obviously this is your sort of traditional grid for keeping score of the game. Uh, you know, we can just go through and take a look here. Uh, uh, Dexter Fowler led off and lined out to the, for, uh, the second baseman, excuse me, for the first out. Uh, one other thing here I want to note want you to note about the game last night. Uh, you see Denorfio was brought in to play center field uh, in the first inning. Well, on that, that role was a, a line out to second plus injury. And if I drop you down here to the bottom of this page, you will see uh, Fowler injured for 15 games. Oh, that's the max. I, I rolled that injury 20-sided and got the uh, the uh, feared 20 <laughs> which gives you a 15 game I think in super advanced it might even go up to 30 but we're only playing advanced as I said in the introduction video so Fowler will be out for about a quarter of the season which is you know I don't know if it's devastating for the Cubs but it's definitely not what anyone would want uh, Fowler seems to be a good leadoff hitter and uh, that's why I had been using him there almost uh, religiously up to this point, but now they're going to have to figure out another uh, another center fielder for the time being. Uh, you know, I'll I'll work through that. Take a look at the cards, but um, as you can see here, you just go through uh, just as a normal card. Some people, I may actually change this down the road. One thing that I do like, and would give me a little bit more room for other stuff over here is to just do at bats in the columns and so you then separate uh, your innings just with a solid line across there or something like that and you just keep going so you don't really even worry about um, I mean th this is more of a traditional scorecard where the innings are across the top and <clears throat> whatnot uh, 
So I, I guess I, I do tend to like that format. I think it plays out well from the standpoint of everybody knows it. And if you start doing more just along the, uh, uh, each column is, you know, represents the, for like the first at bat, second at bat, third at bat, um, it can just confuse some people who are used to the old method. So, okay, let's keep moving here. I don't want to make this too terribly long. Uh, so I have room here for all of the ratings that I think are necessary. And like I said, um, I have cut out this column in my latest, uh, latest one and put in two more columns. So I have the, um, I guess this is actually considered the range. Uh, not, I should put that as an R in the future, not an F. Uh, so this is the range as far as, you know, if, if a ball is hit into the hole will, uh, or into a gap, will the guy get there or not. Um, uh, the arm strength, uh, that plays into running situations, uh, especially for the outfielders and the catchers. Though Those are the only, uh, outfielders and catchers are the only ones that have arm ratings. <clears throat> and... Uh, the E is the error rating, so sometimes, anybody who's played Strat would know this, but for those of you who haven't ever played it and are interested to know, uh, there are chances on cards where there is an X listed for, like a ground ball to the shortstop X, which is, what that is, is it's a sort of a problematic ball for uh, the player that is listed, uh, whether it's in the hole or a hard shot or, or whatever. Uh, so what happens is you have the fielding rating. So if uh, you know you, you you roll the twenty sided die with that, and it, and there's a chart that we have. Uh, I don't have it here in my workshop at the moment. But based on the fielding rating, the higher the number, it goes from one to five. But the higher the number, the poorer the ranges of the fielder. So. Um, you could end up with more hits if you put in a, the, or the your opponent could get more hits if you end up using a fielder with a, a higher range, uh, you know, range number. There, this left-hand column. So, you know, you look here, and uh, you know these guys with threes, they're mi kind of middle of the pack. Um, Nobody in this game actually had uh, anything, but it, I have. There are some fives that are scattered in there. Um, I think actually, uh, if you look down here at Texas, he's. The, I used him as the DH. I think Prince Fielder might actually be a five in terms of his uh, range. So, um, you know, a number. Of, I mean, you know, they they still get plenty of outs, but um, those X ratings continue to build more and more uh, singles. And what it also do is you, you, then you factor in. Um, there's a certain segment of the range that it will end up being. You have to check on the error potential, uh, error rating, whatever you want to call it. But it's the potential for a, like a throwing error or for a guy to just muff the ball or boot it or you know whatever you want to call it. So someone like Bryant or Castro with a higher E rating is going to end up with more chances on. Uh, the next throw that will result in an error um, as opposed to just a, a single because you couldn't reach the grounder in the hole or whatever or something over your head. So anyway, so that's, I guess that's sort of a, a little introduction to what these ratings are. Now what the newer sheets that I have, and I could go get one, but uh, for sake of time, let's just hold off. There's two more columns that I put on here, uh, sacrificing an inning. And that is the steel rating and the running rating. And so what I wanted to put on here are things that you would normally have to thumb back through your deck to look at. Um, guys that are in the field, if you have to look up a, a, a range rating, you kind of have to like flip through the cards unless you write it down here ahead of time. Or if, some, if you think a guy might steal, um, what I do when I play a game is I have the lineup in a in a stack and so the guy who's at bat is on top once his at bat's over you just take that and move it to the bottom uh, if he reaches base then he might want to steal he might have a situation where he could um, get into a 
like a first to third situation or a, a you know all the way to home and um, so there are definitely situations uh, in this game where uh, the running makes a difference and so you don't want to be thumbing back through the, the stack uh, if you don't want to and especially if you like in my case I eventually would like to record some of these and it would take uh, a, a bit of extra time to do that so uh, this would just this just provides uh, quicker um, access so that you are uh, you know you basically take the least amount of time possible to play a game. So the batters, the batting order has space for an extra hitter. You know, I put seven and then B. I could have used A. I don't know why I used B. But so in the case that you might need, let's say you needed to substitute out your second baseman and then substitute out that guy with a pinch hitter in the ninth because the sub wasn't very good at the plate against a left-handed pitcher, but you had uh, another guy who was, a, you know, the power hitter you need, you can move this down here and then you could just put uh, 9C over here in this very far column. And, um, you know, if you want to add the ratings, you can. Uh, if, if, the, per, if the guy is only going to pinch hit, it may not be necessary for you. But um, anyway, this just gives... And also... If you have a league, uh, in this one I'm doing only DH, but if you have a league where you're using the pitcher hitting cards, like so if it's like a, a simulated NL or something like that, this should give you enough space to get um, the typical number of batters. I can't say that um, there probably needs to be a couple more in there. Um, I may have to reformat this once um, I get to the point where I'm actually going to use... Uh, hitting pitchers, which is my preference uh, in my... I like the NL and the way they do things in real life. When I watch baseball, I would prefer to see... I think that adds more strategy and intrigue, but I guess for simplicity's sake, when I did my current league, I wanted to try to keep it um, a little more simple and not have to spend so much time changing out cards and things and trying to decide which... Um, you know, which guy was going to pinch hit and which guy was going to then, you know, which pitcher was then going to, you know, it's just, it's, it's all fun. And, and I think it's probably a, a really good exercise, uh, to show your managerial skills, but, um, you know, that'll come someday for me. Um, okay. <clears throat> Next here is your typical line score. Uh, I don't have a total or not line score, but your, your totals. I don't have a key for this, but you can keep track of whatever you wanted, but I've always done runs, hits, left on base, errors. So um, I guess what I could have done, and maybe I'll do this in a future uh, version, is to put like a faint um, letter in there for each. The R, the H, the L-O-B, and the E, just so that way people know if they're using it, what that's for. I think... It's pretty. That's a pretty standard uh, <clears throat> mechanism that uh, score books incorporate, but um, you know maybe not everybody's familiar with that. Then you have your pitchers. There's room for six here. That gets most games taken care of, and I suppose you could probably toss a couple down in this uh, the record portion or the game notes. If you uh, down here at the bottom, there's a game notes section. You could get a couple more down here if you really ran into a an extra inning. Uh, affair or some really important game where you'd want to go lefty righty lefty righty uh, <laughs> over and over again so um also okay so let's see what other um here's some stuff upstairs sorry what other uh things do i have on this sheet uh, i have a little key here for some of the stealing numbers um uh, Maybe once we start playing a game down uh, the road, maybe tomorrow or the next day, I'll explain more about that. It's just a modifier for when you calculate the stealing. Uh, place for notes. Place to sign your name if you'd like to do that, or you can scribble in Joe Schmo or whatever you want to do. So that's the scoring sheet. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty straightforward. Um, Nothing that's probably out of the ordinary at this point, besides if you're 
if you're a baseball person and you've been scoring games, you wouldn't probably keep much of that. But uh, anyway, if you start playing Strat, you will find that much more helpful. So then the second page, page two, is for stat compilations. So if you notice, I'll bring this back over here. I have no room over here for stats. And, you know, if you're if you're doing play-by-play, -play, that might be helpful. Uh, but I, I don't really populate those until the very, very end of the game anyway. So, <clears throat> to me, I can kind of like quickly glance at, like let's say Anthony Rizzo is coming to the plate and I can see that, uh, you know, he's 0 for 3 with a hit by pitch and uh, whatnot. So, I have some family upstairs that's making a bunch of racket for some odd reason. Probably because I'm down here. But. <laughs> so, getting back to the, the statistical compilation. The reason that I do this sheet is because I like to be able to sit in my easy chair and do the calculations. It's a lot less tedious than having to sit at my Excel spreadsheet uh, at my computer desk and actually have to do this stuff. Um, it can just get a little bit um, uh, uncomfortable and, and tedious and so if I can just relax it's better. So uh, let's start from, from the top of course. I mean I can start filling in some of this just to show you here. Uh, you know it's series two like it was before. Uh, it was game three of three. So I'm trying to just I keep some of this data consistent 6 16 it might turn to 15 eventually and you see at the top of this it's one and one well Chicago won uh, won the game three to one so Chicago wins the series uh, two to one so we're gonna put that in there uh, we can put the team in here and in the record section I put the updated record, which is five and one. Come down here to the bottom, do the same thing down here. Poor Texas Rangers. They are back to 500. But they faced, um, they faced one of the better teams in baseball in, in the Cubs, so they have plenty of places to go it up. Uh, uh, they can go up from here for sure. So then my score sheet has a place for um, all of the starters. I like to start with the starters here in just one fell swoop here. So we got Fowler, Coglin. This won't take long. Try to do it somewhat legibly. Bryant. Lair, Addison Russell is the DH. David Ross came through in the clutch. And Herrera got a spot start at second base for Mr. Russell. So we're going to go four to DH. Uh, you could argue that the positions aren't so necessary on this, but. The thing I like most about that is when, well, I'll, I'll talk about that a little later. I mean, you get Starling Castro there, and Coglin left, and Fowler in center, but, okay. The other thing I have here is room for the additional batters, and in this case, we do have an additional batter, because uh, Chris Denorfia was forced to pinch it for... Uh, Monsieur Fowler. So we're going to put, I'm just going to go ahead and put the inning in there. I don't necessarily have to, but that helps. So then what I do is I just go through and, and tabulate and if we come over here and take a look at this. Um, Fowler, I like to start with, I like to go down the list and make sure that I get the additional batters in the calculation because it's very easy if you just sort of like rush through this guy to just hit Fowler for all of these and he was only responsible for the ones so he was just uh, 0 for 1 
I like to fill in the zeros for the runs and the RBIs because those are the kind of the meat and potatoes of the statistics. Um, the rest of them over here, I will leave blank unless they are populated. Uh, and then for Denorthia, he's got the next three. He's got a sack fly, and uh, he flied out to the left, and he uh, had an unassisted put out from the first baseman. So, that sack fly does not count as an at-bat. So he only had two, oh, shoot, that's the wrong, we can, we can fix that. That's why I want to do it like this. Uh, we had, uh, Denorfia has two, 0 for 2, didn't get any runs, uh, no RB, oh, he did have an RBI. See, this is why I shouldn't use pen, but I do like pen because it stands out better, so. He did get an RBI there on that sack fly. Uh, that's the only way you can get a sack fly. So over here on the far right, we have a place for sacrifices, and he did get a sack fly out of that. Um, no strikeouts, no walks, uh, no hit by pitch, so, and no stolen bases. So um, most of these things that are on the right side are not populated at this point. So now we can just go through with the rest of these guys. Um, so. Um, Move it up here to the top of it here. Coglin, he was 0 for 4. Just have to scribble it out there. He had two strikeouts. Poor guy was just crossed right up there. Now you get to Starlin Castro. He went 2 for 4. You get the picture. He had a run. Uh, doesn't look like he caught any RBIs on this. Uh, there were only three runs scored and... Um, David Ross actually got those two so sometimes in games like this you can uh, uh, just go ahead and put the two in there and then you can none of these other gentlemen should get RBIs the other thing you could do is you could look down through here and say oh uh, Russell got a run Castro and Rizzo got runs well we already put Castro's in there Rizzo got a run Russell got a run right yep so, then you could zero out the rest of these chaps, and so there. That, so that's like most of it. Uh, Castro didn't strike out, but he did have a double. So let's go ahead and populate the double, and you get the picture. I'm not going to go through the whole thing and, and bore you all, but you, you get the the picture here that this is how it's going. to Well, let's let's complete the, the Cubs just to. Um, Rizzo is. 0 for 3, surprisingly, but he did uh, get dinged by uh, Sam Freeman there in the 7th inning, so he did do that. He also grounded into, or, uh, yeah, lined into a double play. Um, Bryant was 0 for 4. He had two strikeouts. Uh, Solar had a strikeout and was 0 for 3. Now you're getting down to the point where these guys only came up to bat three times. Uh, an error was... Uh, Russell reached on an ear, so that actually counts as in at bat. Um, yeah, so that's three at bats. He did get a single, uh, and he uh, did strike out. Um, Ross went one for three with a strikeout, but he also doubled, so we can add that in there. And uh, another one for three at the bottom. The bottom of the order actually did relatively well for them and so you get to this point where you can then tabulate these okay so what I've done here is I took a little bit of time here and, and tabulated all these because I wanted to show you this one other section because um, sometimes uh, I, I like doing this because it helps so uh, so I have this this section over here called the proof, and what the proof does is make sure that you got all your stats right. And I even found a mistake in some of my tabulations here earlier. From uh, I missed uh, Starling Castro's second hit, and so I, they uh, the Cubs actually had five hits in this game. But anyway, uh, so Gallardo had uh, you know tw twenty one, so twenty two, twenty nine. 32, so 32 batters faced. So this proof section 
What you then do is you take the opponent's batter's face, which we just found out was 32, and then what you do is you take the bats, which you find here with 30, and the walks, which are zero, one hit by pitch, one sack fly gives 32. They should equal. And then this section should equal two. You get a 27, they had three, and they only had two left on base, 32. So there you go. And that's just a way to make sure that all your stats match up. And mine didn't there for a period of time, but that I wouldn't have figured that out from the hits. Uh, but it, I did figure it out from um, the hits column uh, up here. So, but anyway, so let's just kind of get through the rest of this. Everything else worked pretty much similarly. The pitchers, I now would take this and, and get Arietta. Uh, he gets a victory. He went nine innings, and I'm not going to do the rest. Um, and then we have uh, the Rangers. We do the same thing with that, same proof and everything. Uh, and then the last thing I would do is uh, figure out all of the fielding statistics over here on the right. I have a place for that, which works out pretty well. So. Um, I think at this point, uh, that's about it. Um, if you like this, I know it's a bit of a long video here, but uh, if you'd like to try out this system at some point, it it's, works great for a three-ring binder. Uh, I could definitely um, send you a PDF or the Excel file in an email and uh, uh, get that to you, and you could have it a, give it a shot. So. Anyway, that's my scoring system, and until next time, this is Earl and Stradon.